Well, finally we come to the uh, video for which all five videos are named, the uh, column click list view sort video. And I should warn you this video is a little mystical. And the reason it's a little mystical is that most of the code is really written by Microsoft and just tapped into by us. But understandably the first thing we have to write if we're going to make a column click sort is we need to tap into the column click event. So with the list view selected we come down to the uh, events and find the uh, column click. Double click on this and the first time you double click on it of course you're going to create this event handler but after that whenever you click on it you're going to go to the event handler you've already created and initially let's forget about all this code and just look at the last line and the last line is the LSV student data dot list view item sorter equals new where we instantiate a new class and in the constructor to the new class we pass two parameters a column number which is passed through the uh, column click event args e and the property dot column and a sort order which has one of two values either sort order ascending or sort order descending so if we right click on this constructor and go to go to definition we see we've created a nested class which is called list view item comparer and which implements the i comparer interface and this has to implement the i comparer interface it i don't know if it has to be a nested class but it probably should be every example i've ever seen it was a nested class within the main partial form 1 class and I'm also not sure whether it has to have the name list view item comparer but I, I once again in every white paper I've seen and all the documentation I've seen I've never seen it called anything but list view item comparer but the first thing we notice about this class is it has two private variables an int call which is the column number and a sort order uh, which is the order either descending or ascending and we have two constructors. The default one just sets the uh, column to zero or the symbolic value student name and the order to sort order dot ascending. But in the second constructor that overrides the first one, we specify the column and the sort order. So this allows us to sort on any uh, column. And then the method we have to implement for the iCompare interface is the public int compare, which has object X and object Y. And this is a place where it gets a little mystical because really all this function does is order two pairs. And all the code that actually goes through all the pairs and does the equivalent of a bubble sort and puts everything in order is really written by Microsoft so this could be really confusing if you don't realize that but the first thing we do with the uh, column value is compare it to date of birth and if it's not date of birth it means it's either a string or a number and we can sort it via the string compare and we're in good shape but if it is date of birth we need to convert both the data items that we have in the pair the X and Y data items and convert both of those via date time parse to a date time and then use a date time dot compare to compare the two values and in the case of both sections we have a section at the bottom that says if the order is sort order dot descending then multiply the return value times minus one and the whole nature of that is in the compare 
if the value is less than zero it means the two items are in order if it's zero it means they're exactly the same and if it's greater than zero it need, means we need to switch the uh, pairs in the Microsoft driven code that's switching pairs as it goes down the row so by multiplying this by minus one we reverse the sense if it's positive it becomes negative and if it's negative it becomes positive of course if it's zero it remains zero so this allows us to switch from ascending to descending so if we look back at our column click event handler the above code makes a lot more sense it basically says if the E column is equal to the sort column and the sort column is a memory variable that we have that remembers whether it's the last column we clicked and if these aren't the same then we just set the sort column equal to the E dot column and the sort order to ascending because it's the first time we've clicked on the column so we want an ascending order but if these two are the same then we we do a flip-flop we basically say if the sorting order was ascending make it descending and if it's not ascending it must be descending already so flip it back to ascending so this flip-flop code allows us to click on a column multiple times and then the first time we click on it it makes the order ascending in the sort the second time we click on it, it makes it descending. And to look at all these variables that are global, this is the sort column, which is initially set to minus 1. And since the columns are going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3, obviously we're going to get a break boundary the first time, and they're not going to be equal. So it'll be the first time we click on it, and it'll be ascending. And then the other globals we have here is the student file, which is the student file name where we're saving the, bear, the binary data. And then we have the symbolic names for the columns, <coughs> which makes the code a lot more readable. Student name is 0 for column 0, student ID 1, date of birth 2, and average mark 3. So if we compile and run this code, we see the data we really put it originally put in and the order that we put it in where it's just totally unsorted on anything and if we click on student name suddenly we have an ascending order with A, B, C, E, K and so on down to S and of course all the corresponding data also is sorted if we click on this again it goes in descending order where we start with S and end with A. If we click on student ID, it initially goes it in, in ascending order with the uh, Wow, it gets it wrong. That's interesting. It says it handles this numeric data correctly, but it actually doesn't. We clearly need to no add another column for the two numeric fields and actually convert these to numbers before we do the compare. A string compare really doesn't suffice unless we don't mind that, you know, 6 is considered largely larger than 129 because uh, it's numerically larger, 6 is numerically larger than 1. They're just comparing the first column. So this doesn't work. Actually, these two will have to be changed to add a, another condition in our uh, compare method of our uh, list view item comparer class. So that's interesting. I'll leave that as an exercise for the student to uh, change those. But if we s s click on date of birth, see that does work correctly. The first one is 1887 which is Boris Karloff which uh, is way back there and then 1937, 1955, 1958 
1965 and so on. So the special class code we did for date with a date compare does indeed work. And if we click it the other way, it gets the, the first one first and the oldest one last. The most recent one first and the oldest one last. So we have indeed gotten this to work. We're going to have to rewrite the uh, numerical. It said in the documentation that it handles alphanumeric correctly. And I assume by that it meant that it handled numbers correctly. But it doesn't. <laughs> So this would have to be rewritten and we'd have to need to add new code for these two columns. We'd have to special case those as well. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and this series of five videos and learned a lot. And I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.